we are going to focus on our favorites coming out of not only the Eastern Conference, but the Western Conference as well. So we'll start with the Eastern Conference first, just to kind of give you guys the standings from last year's Eastern Conference standings. It went with the top eight teams being Washington at number eight, the Boston Celtics at number seven, the Miami Heat at number six, the Atlanta Hawks at number five, the New York Knicks at number four, the Milwaukee Bucks at number three, the Brooklyn Nets at number two, and the Philadelphia 76ers at number one. So, Kevin, going into the 2021-2022 season, who do you think is your favorite coming out of the Eastern Conference this year? So I've been I've been rattling my brain about this pretty much all segment. Every time Kyle kind of took the camera off uh, to put it to himself, I was doing a little bit of research and trying to look into some some more news in terms of what the Eastern Conference could bring to the table. But I'm I'm, I'm conflicted, man. The East seems so much more competitive in of more recent years. Obviously, the Chicago Bulls have completely reloaded with the acquisition of Demar Derozan and Lonzo Ball. The New York Knicks are looking to have a repeat of last season and going into the playoffs confidently, obviously with hoping of better results. Miami Heat went and finally got a point guard in Kyle Lowry, so they're looking to take their next step to get back to the NBA Finals. And then obviously Brooklyn's got their situation with Kyrie Irving, so is that going to be a hindrance to the Brooklyn's uh, to Brooklyn's success? Actually, so I don't really know how that's going to work. I'm looking at Atlanta. Obviously, they re-signed John Collins and gave Trey Young his big extension. So for the most part, that team is relatively the exact same. And then Philadelphia's got their issues with Ben Simmons, and he had his first, uh, I believe, his first practice with the team yesterday. And I, I don't necessarily know how much they're going to do if, if he doesn't change his aggressiveness. And then, you know, Boston and, you know, the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks. If I had to put a, a guess of it, I want to say Milwaukee will come out of the East again just because the team looks like it's pretty much the exact same team from last year. Um, I'm not going to buy into the hype, but I did send Kyle some 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 images of that boy Giannis doing some uh, some jump shots, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, in, in-game fadeaways and whatnot, and nice it looks at fault. Yeah, I know, I know. Like I said, I'm not looking into it, but if he can make that a consistent thing where he could put someone in the post and turn a little post fade – uh, you know, increases mid-range jump shot percentage and, of course, the three-point percentage. Uh, I, I really do think Milwaukee has a chance to come out of the Eastern Conference again, but I can't say that definitively wholeheartedly that it's, you know, that's my pick because there's just so many competitive teams that could, of course, make noise in the East. And, of course, Brooklyn is definitely a team to completely keep your eye on because you cannot sleep on James Harden and Kevin Durant playing a full season together. Yeah, this is a tough one for me because... I completely agree with you on the fact that, by and large, the entire conference is a lot more competitive than it was when LeBron James was essentially owning that entire conference. But when I look at this season in particular, I'm really focused on two teams here. And that is the Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. I didn't mention Philly because I don't know how that situation with Ben Simmons and the team is going to affect them going into this season, even though that I think that Philadelphia is definitely going to be a top four team in the East when it's all said and done. I'm going to side with Brooklyn here. And that's despite the issues that the team has had with Kyrie Irving and the stance that he's taken and not getting the, the COVID vaccine where he could potentially miss up to half the season or half of the home games uh, because he's not vaccinated. I still side with them because I imagine that Kevin Durant and James Harden are just going to be on an absolute tear the entire season simply because I believe that they as a team felt like they were better than Milwaukee Bucks last year and let it slip in that game seven in the second round of the playoffs last year. So I think when I look at the roster, I mean, they were able to add some veteran pieces into the lineup in the offseason. You know, you get KD back. You're getting James Harden back. We'll see what happens with Kyrie Irving. You also get LaMarcus Aldridge coming back as well after that whole heart issue that he had last season. Um, he got cleared from his doctors on that one, and they allowed him to play. So when I combine the factors of having KD, James Harden, having most of the core guys back from last year, I think this team is just going to be determined to right the ship from what they had last year and be able to make not only a run at the top of the Eastern Conference, I think that in my mind that this team could potentially win the finals when it's all said and done. I have that much confidence 
in Brooklyn this year. The only thing that could derail this team moving forward is injuries. And we saw last year that we didn't get to see Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving play as a three-man trio just because multiple players in that trio were dealing with injuries at some point throughout the season. So, you know, that's always kind of a key issue with any team that is your projected favorite to come out of any conference is always injuries. And if they can minimize and mitigate the amount of injuries that they couldn't do last year, I think they will be set up in the driver's seat, not only in the Eastern Conference, but for the entire NBA as well. I just, I find it very difficult to see any of these other teams in the Eastern Conference really being able to defeat Brooklyn in a seven-game series before it gets to the finals. I do think that Milwaukee has a chance this year just because I have to respect their defensive mindset and their attitude. That is what, by and large, kind of kept them in that series against Brooklyn last year. And the 76ers, there's a lot of unknowns with them, but I definitely think that they're going to be a top-four team to contend with, and I do think that they will give Brooklyn some bit of a run or some bit of a scare uh, when it gets to the playoffs, but I just I have more faith in Brooklyn this year, and I don't want to say that they're head and shoulders above everybody else, but I think they have the advantage over the rest of the Eastern Conference, in my opinion. 